this example, we're going to be looking at a little bit more involved case where we're trying to determine if the series converges conditionally, absolutely, or diverges. So notice here I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 4. Um, it is an alternating series. Okay, so it's not all positive. Um, but I also notice here that I don't have any exponential terms and I don't have any factorial terms. I actually really just have p-series type things because I have n to the first power here and n to the second power in the denominator. So we don't want to use the ratio test, okay, because that would end up not being helpful. I'd end up just showing that the, that the limit of the, the ratio of consecutive terms is 1, which is not conclusive. So instead I have to think of back to my, my procedure for determining if something um, converges conditionally, absolutely, or diverges, which means I want to start by looking at the sum of the absolute value. So we didn't have to do multiple steps with the ratio test because our ratio test um, will either tell us it converges absolutely or diverges. There's no chance of the conditional convergence, so we didn't need to go through multiple um, steps. But here, we can't use the ratio test, so we got to start looking at the sum of um, the absolute value of the term separate from the sum of the original series here. Okay, so we're going to look at the sum of the absolute value of the ans first. Notice that that would be equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of just n over n squared plus 4. Okay, the ans would be negative 1 to the n times um, n over n squared plus 4, so the absolute value of that is just n over uh, the sum of n over n squared plus 4. So now we've got positive terms. So we can think about one of the convergence tests that required positive terms. Since that is, this is sort of like a p-series, we want to think about comparing this to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of like n over n squared, okay, or the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And then we know the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges, okay? It's the divergent harmonic series, or it's a p-series with p equals 1, okay? So now I need to do one of my comparison tests. Um, we can go ahead and do the limit comparison test here. So I'm going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of my terms n over n squared plus 4 divided by 1 over n or times n over 1. So this gives me a limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n squared plus 4. Okay, I have the same um, highest power of n in the numerator and denominator, so I know my limit's just the coefficients of those. So I get 1 for the limit. Okay, so um, I've been mentioning, you know, we need to specifically note that the values that we get here meets the conditions of the test. Notice I got 1 here. If this was the ratio test that I'd be doing, that would not allow me to draw a conclusion, but we're doing the limit comparison test. So all we have to do here is make sure that our value is um, positive and finite. So it does meet that condition. Okay, so we can conclude for this particular part here. So our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over n squared plus 4 converges, excuse me, diverges, the thing we compared it to diverges, um, diverges, okay, um, by our limit comparison test. Okay, so we showed the sum of the absolute value here, the sum of the absolute value diverges, so that means that our series can't be absolutely convergent. So we have to go on to step two to determine whether it, it just diverges or whether it's conditionally convergent. Okay. So we go to step two. And now we look at just the sum of ans, the original series here, which is our sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 4. Okay, so again, this is an alternating series. Okay, 
the bn part is equal to n over n squared plus 4, which is positive. So we have all that sign information and just that negative 1 to the n. And so we're going to try to use the alternating series test. So we want to try the alternating series test. Okay. Well, that means I need to show that bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. So I want to know, is that true? And then I need to say, well, is the limit as n goes to infinity of my bn equal to 0? Okay. Well, notice that the bn that I have here is um, a little bit more complicated than maybe in some other examples that we've seen. So this is a case where I want to show that my bn's are decreasing by showing that the associated function is decreasing. Instead of trying to compare the bn plus 1, where I would replace n here with n plus 1, compare those um, things in terms of inequalities, that's going to get kind of tricky. So we're going to let f of x be equal to x over x squared plus 4, and we want to show f of x is decreasing after some point. Okay, so I need to take the derivative of my function. Okay, so I'm going to need to use the quotient rule on that. So I find that f prime of x is equal to this bottom function, x squared plus 4 times the derivative of the top times 1, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function, all over our bottom function squared. So this is going to give me x squared plus 4 minus 2x squared, or I'll have 4 minus x squared once I simplify that. This is over x squared plus 4 squared. Okay, so where is f prime 0? Well, f prime of x is going to equal 0 when x is 2 or negative 2. Okay, so if I make a little sign chart here for my function, scroll down a little more. I just really care what's happening after that largest critical value. So notice that if I plug in something into my derivative that's bigger than 2, like 3, I will get something negative here in the numerator. That denominator is always positive, so this will be negative. So I can say that f prime is less than 0 for x greater than 2. Okay, So f is decreasing for x greater than 2. Okay, And the function being decreasing means that my sequence of bn's is also decreasing. Okay, which is what I wanted to be able to conclude here for my alternating series test. So bn is decreasing, and it's decreasing starting at the, the next integer, for n greater than or equal to 3. Okay, but for alternating series tests, we just care that our series, or excuse me, our terms are eventually decreasing. So after some n, if it's forever decreasing after that point, we have met the condition. Okay, so that checked our first condition. Now what about the bn's? Well, I need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n squared plus 4. Okay, I notice that the highest power in my denominator is n squared. So if I divide n by n squared, I'm going to have 1 over n. This will be all over 1 plus 4 over n squared. Okay, so we notice that 1 over n and 4 over n squared are both going to 0. So we see that our limit does come out to be 0, which is exactly what we wanted for the um, alternating series test. Okay, so we can say here, so by our steps 1 and 2 within this part, the sum of a n equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 4 converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so now we need to answer the original question which had to do with whether this sum of an converged conditionally, absolutely, or diverged. We've already shown it converges here, so we know it doesn't diverge. From step one, we knew it wasn't absolutely convergent because the sum of the absolute value diverged. So our overall conclusion here will be that the series is conditionally convergent. Okay. So we had steps 1 and 2. Step 1 was showing that the sum of the absolute value diverged. Step 2 ended up showing the sum of our um, original series converged. So we have our overall conclusion here. So our sum of an equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity 
of negative 1 to the n, n over n squared plus 4 converges conditionally. Okay, and we don't say it converges conditionally by any one test because conditional conversion involved all of that work from steps 1 and step 2. Okay, so we have Whenever we have one of these conditionally convergent types, which is sort of the longest um, type that we'll see when we're looking at showing something's absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Conditional convergence will always require these two parts where I separately show the sum of the absolute value diverges using a single test. Um, so I have some justification like we have here. Okay, I had work on the sum of the absolute value. I concluded that that series diverged by the limit comparison test, so I had a little sub-conclusion in there. Step two, we did some work on the, the original series itself, the sum of an. We showed that that series converged, so I have another little conclusion here for my step two by the alternating series test. And then um, I have my ultimate conclusion here that my series converges conditionally here by the work that we did above in steps one and two. So let me know if you have any questions on these examples.